Thank you very much for coming. Um, welcome to our uh, second edition of Side by Side Elasticsearch and Solar. Um, let us, um, this time we will focus on uh, a bit of the scaling and uh, a bit more of the performance. Uh, first, let us introduce ourselves. Uh, we are both search consultants at Sematext. We both work on our log aggregation product, which is called Logzine. Um, this is my colleague Rafal. He wrote like six books. I don't know, I lost count. These two are the latest. Um, he's also uh, a family guy. These are his, his two kids. His only two kids, not only the latest. And uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay, and this is Radu. Uh, as he said, we work together. Uh, he's also a consultant, a trainer. Uh, he also happened to write a book, Elastic Search in Action, which I actually personally like. If you want, there is a uh, discount code. Uh, he also is a father and a family guy. And but that's for the introduction. Let's us continue. Why do you do? Uh, okay. So last year we did the side by side with Solar and Elasticsearch talk uh, in buzzwords, and we talked briefly about uh, both of those great products. So we took the opportunity to, talk, uh, to tell you about how the indexing works, how the querying works, what are the other functionalities like that data analysis, faceting on Solar side aggregations on Elasticsearch. We also we also looked at uh, the tools available and other things like the APIs. We also compared the community engagement in for those both products like uh, committers, uh, code, the mailing list activities, and stuff like that. Basically, the last year conclusions were that uh, most projects work well with both Solar and Elasticsearch. There are very, very sm uh, small amount of showstoppers that would say, don't go Elasticsearch, don't go Solar, but there are very large number in small differences because those are different products based on Lucene. Uh, in, ad in addition, we said that choose the best that you like, that you are comfortable with, choose the one that you, uh, works for your use case, and uh, that's how it go, went last year. However, uh, we wanted to also bring you back with a retrospection of what happened during that year between those two talks. So last year, we sh we've, uh, you've seen a slide like this. So we talked that in solar, we will see the faceting by function, analytics component, and solar as a standalone application. Now, when the release candidate 3 is already in the works uh, for solar version 5.2, all those things are uh, active and we can use them with a stable release. On the, on the side of Elasticsearch, we said the top hits aggregation to enable uh, field collapsing and not only. Uh, the minimum should match on has child to allow us to uh, actually match documents on the number, basic on the number of the ch children hits and the filters aggregation, which we can use filters uh, to bucket the aggregations. And that's, again, everything in, current, in the current versions we use, uh, which uh, for Elasticsearch is 1.5 something. The, but that's not all. Uh, in the upcoming releases, actually, uh, we'll be seeing a lot more from those two products. Starting from Elasticsearch, in 2.0, we'll see the computation and aggregations introduced, which allow us to do computation on the buckets of aggregation, which is, again, great because it, for example, allows us to do more sophisticated data analysis, like the moving averages aggregation, which is already a part of 2.0 release, which will be released hopefully sometimes this year. We have, will have the cluster uh, different support to easier handle uh, use cases where you have a large number of shards uh, in your cluster. And the shadow replicas are already here, uh, which means that you can just reuse the binary copy of Lucene index instead of using the transaction log and index on each of the replicas. On the solar side, 5.2 version uh, and 5.1. Starting from 5.1, we have the JSON facets uh, that we can use JSON, similar to what we have already in Elasticsearch to construct our facet. We'll say have the and uh, nested faceting in 5.2. Uh, we'll have the backup and restore functionality with the replication handler allowing us to just backup and uh, use the backup uh, with an API call. Again, similar to what we already have in Elasticsearch. The streaming aggregations, which allows us to build very fast uh, processing for the data, like sorting engines, and the cross data center replication, which is hopefully coming in 5.3. 
which allows us to uh, replicate the data between data centers and have more fault tolerant setups. But for this year, we wanted to tell you about three things. First of all, some kind of theory behind horizontal scaling of both, because they are similar when it comes to the theory and quite different when it comes to practice. Then we'll show you two use cases, the product ones and the locus use case. We'll show you the performance in those cases and a few nice slides, hopefully. So when it comes to horizontal scaling in theory, we have the nodes in both Elasticsearch and Solar. We each uh, index uh, in Elasticsearch, all collection in Solar, uh, is built of shard, at least one. Uh, we can have multiple nodes, then we need uh, multiple shards, so our index or collection needs to be built on, of multiple shards, divided and put into onto the nodes, this is done automatically, of course. If we need to plan for the future, we can have multiple shards already put on a, uh, already created nodes. Uh, so we have over sharding to allow us to split, the, to place the shard on new nodes in the, in the future whenever we want. Of course, for read throughput increase, we have the replicas. Uh, for each shard, we can create both in Elasticsearch and Solar, we can use the API and create the replicas wherever we want on demand, and that will be done automatically. I'd like to add a few things about how these uh, shards and replicas are being managed with both Elasticsearch and Solar. So with Elasticsearch, you have the nice thing that it automatically balances uh, um, shards and replicas across your cluster, and when you add nodes and remove them, things are, are balanced on the fly. Um, if they are not as you want, you can always uh, move shards around by using the cluster reroute API. Um, if you want to change the number of replicas or uh, other um, index settings, you can use the update indices settings API. Um, and uh, the other cool thing that it has that Solar hasn't, at least right now, um, you can um, use all sorts of rules to do uh, to place your shards. For example, you can have node tiers. For example, you can have fast nodes to to hold your recent data and slow nodes to uh, hold your archive data. And then <clears throat> you can tag them and have uh, Elasticsearch automatically uh, place uh, indices in those uh, servers for you. Or you can have rack awareness and things like that. Uh, on the solar side, you have the collections API, which you can use to um, create indices, uh, create replicas, and things like that. Uh, you can also use the collections API to move shards around, though this is a bit more clumsy. You have to create a new replica on the node you want to move the shard to, and you have to then, after it's completed, delete the, the old replica from the old node. Um, but you have some uh, nice features here as well that are uh, not present in Elasticsearch, at least for now. You can split a shard on the fly, though this is an expensive operation because it has to sort of copy data. Um, but anyway, you can do that and you can also migrate a slice of your data. For example, if you have uh, multiple users' data into the same shard and you uh, use a routing key for each user. You can take one user's data out and migrate it to its own uh, collection, um, again, using the API. Okay, so when it comes to products, uh, we did a few assumptions uh, before the test. So we assumed that when you have a, pro a product use case, the data growth is quite steady. It grows over time, but it's not something like daily data or anything like that. So we usually use one or few indices, not like in the logs use case, which rather we'll talk about. We also have spikes in traffic that we need to be prepared for, because during promotions or holidays, uh, we can see a lot of uh, traffic more than we are usually used to uh, every day. In addition to that, we need to be prepared for large QPS, uh, because the, the, it, the, in that use case, you usually don't index that, the number of uh, data that you index when it comes to logs. You usually have a static index with small number of updates, like the prices or the likes or views or anything like that. It's also, the data is also common, the, it has a common structure, and the thing to remember is that it's mostly steady when it comes to indexing, uh, so uh, the caches and all that stuff is not refreshed very often. 
the hardware we've used for uh, tests uh, were two EC2 C3 large instances, each having two, C two virtual CPUs, three and a half gigs of RAM, a uh, few megs of SSDs, actually two of them, two of 16 gigabytes SSDs in RAID 0, and we used Wikipedia data. Spanish Wikipedia with more or less 10 gigabytes per node of, of index. Uh, the test requests looked like this. We have the one common query that were run using JMeter, hammering the uh, instances. And uh, we have a dictionary of common and uncommon terms that we just used to simulate, uh, more or less simulate what we would expect from the users. However, remember, those were synthetic tests. You can do them. You can see the, here is a GitHub account that holds the data and all that stuff that we used for tests. But still, this is a synthetic test, nowhere near production. We wanted to show a few things, actually. Uh, so when it came to the product search at five threads of JMeter, we had a throughput like this. Mm, about 500 queries per second for Elasticsearch, almost 320 queries per solar. So we should say that, in this case, Elasticsearch is faster than solar. But we've noticed one thing yesterday. Everyone makes mistakes, and we also did one. Actually, when we were indexing data, uh, we noticed that Solar had about 40% more Wikipedia data than uh, Elasticsearch. We don't know why. We used the same uh, XML. Uh, but it was uh, 5 o'clock yesterday, so we needed to do a few more tests, We screwed actually. up a bit. Yeah, so, a screw up. Uh, not to say it harder. So we did another test, the second try. And this time we took uh, simpler data, we took a video search, we indexed 10 million of documents for each, and uh, now the funny thing happened. When we started JMeter with 20 threads, we've seen something like this. The blue one is the solar throughput, and the orange one is Elasticsearch. And now I would like to ask you a question. Why that did that happen? Anyone knows? Close, 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 close. But not close enough. <laughs> so basically... We did a warm-up run first and then do... Yes. Uh, mm, basically, uh, you, how many of you know solar? Okay. I suppose the rest of us know Elasticsearch, right? Okay, so basically, uh, in solar, you have those top-level caches. Uh, the ones that we are usually used to, not counting the per-segment one for uh, nested and, block and uh, blocked... Uh, ah, okay, for nested documents, let's, <laughs> let's end it. Uh, we have three time types of caches. The filter cache, the query result cache, and document cache. In that case, uh, because of the queries, we're not... Uh, diverse enough, uh, we just, after the first time the query was run, it was put into the cache, and when the second uh, query of similar structure came with the same trace, the same start, rows, uh, and sort, Solar didn't have to go to Lucene index. It just took an entry from the query result cache and returned, and returned the data. This is why you see the difference. When we turned off the caches, the situation was completely different. You can now see that we run exactly the same test, but without solar caching enabled. We throw it away from the configuration from solar config completely. And now you can see that the queries per minute, still for Elasticsearch, we have the same. The machines were overloaded, so it's not something that you should expect your Elasticsearch to uh, only have 300 queries per minute uh, of throughput. But for that use case, it, it was like this. And solar had 156. Uh, when it comes to throughput uh, queries per minute. So you can see that the caches here play a major role. And what we actually wanted to, to say is that uh, they are both fast. You need to plan for the data growth and uh, prepare for a high QPS, but remember that configuration matters a lot uh, in both cases. So if you go with uh, your use case and you take the all the, all the stuff that is out of the box, you may actually not have the optimal performance for both when it comes to Elasticsearch and when it comes to Solar. 
All right, let's move on to the logs use case, which typically has a completely different pattern. You have lots of data coming in, lots of data being uh, deleted every day because uh, you have a fixed retention usually. Um, you don't have that many queries, but those queries may be more expensive if you run them on more data. Um, there are no updates and things like that once you write a login. Um, we have the same uh, clusters for testing, only this time we indexed Apache logs over and over again. Um, on the settings side, uh, we tried to have equivalent configurations. Again, like with the products, we had the same sort of schemas. Uh, we had uh, dog values uh, in both uh, use cases for not analyzed fields. Um, we uh, did soft commits every five seconds as we were indexing and hard commits every 200 megabytes. And because Elasticsearch has that under, uh, underscore all field to index everything by default, we did the same for, for solar, S sort of the same. We had a catch all field where we copied everything. So um, the queries, we had uh, seven queries. Um, we have a bunch of filters, uh, from, uh, starting from a simple filtering uh, by a client IP to a more uh, expensive filter, like filtering by wildcard. And then we had a bunch of analytics queries, <coughs> from a date histogram to uh, the most expensive one, which was a nested, um, a nested aggregation. Um, if you were, you're wondering how we did the nested aggregation on solar is because we used the 5.2 snapshot, which will get that feature. Um, for Elasticsearch, we, we, we use the snapshot of the upcoming 2.0 uh, of about two weeks to a month ago. So we did three tests in this use case. One, uh, the first one was to write as much as we can. Uh, to a single index, and then uh, the second one would be to write steadily <clears throat> at a lower uh, rate and uh, do a more realistic measure of query latency. And then we moved to an even more realistic uh, production setup where we had time-based indices, and we also have node layers, like the hot nodes to hold the latest index and to get all the indexing hits and spikes, and then uh, cold nodes to to hold the archive data, and we uh, ran the queries on, on this setup as well. All right, so the first test, we, we just had a single index or single collection, and we wrote as much as we could. Um, both have very good indexing throughput, I think. It's much more than you would probably need, uh, because the index will just fill up uh, in terms of disk space in, uh, in a few hours. Um, Solar is slightly better here at indexing, um, but you can see both that our performance is degrading as the index grows, and this happens because um, merges are happening in the background. So for those who don't know, uh, when you write to a Lucene index, uh, this happens in segments, which are immutable, and searches go through all these segments. So uh, in order to keep the number of segments in check, in background, you have to merge smaller segments into bigger ones, and this is I.O. intensive and also um, quite CPU intensive, so this bites from the, um, from the indexing performance. You can see that the solar throughput uh, falls down a bit more, and I think this is because it, the index grows a bit more, so. A bit faster. Yeah, a bit faster. Um, and during that run, we also did the queries, and you can see here that there are quite a few differences already. Um, Elasticsearch does a lot better when it comes to filtering performance, and this is again caused by caching, because um, we run the same queries over and over again. Uh, Elasticsearch was able to cache them in per segment caches. Solar doesn't have that, it has the overall caches which are invalidated with each write. So we can see with Solar we have more or less the same latency no matter how expensive the query is. However, Solar is, uh, seems to be better when it comes to nesting, uh, nested aggregations. Um, and uh, both are quite spiky because you know, the, the servers were, were hammered quite a lot. But you can see Solar is even more spikier and uh, when you see the zero, um, yeah, the zero latencies, that is when uh, queries actually timed out. 
So now the second test we indexed at 400 events per second, which may not sound like a lot, but for this cluster, uh, it would fill up the disk space uh, of nodes in two or three days. And um, usually if you need more, you need more, usually you need more retention than that, so you would probably have a bigger cluster. Um, so yeah, for this cluster, 400 events per second is quite a lot um, in terms of being realistic. It's not a lot in terms of load, it barely fills it. Um, but anyway, we were interested in query latencies and we can see uh, more of the same. Elasticsearch is faster at, at filtering because of caching. Um, and solar is faster at uh, the nested aggregation. The simple aggregations take more or less the same time. Um, then we move to time-based indices and I would like to take a minute to explain why that is a good idea because if you're writing to a smaller index, only to today's index, for example, you're invalidating less caches, you're doing less merges, so indexing will be faster. Also, when you're searching, because data is sliced up, you can, for example, because normally when you're searching for logs, you're searching only on the recent data, and on, only occasionally you do like analytics over the whole data set and things like that. And if you have time-based indices, then you can just search the chunk of indices that you're interested in. So these searches will be faster. Um, and also when you, when you delete data, uh, you can delete entire indices instead of deleting documents from within an index and causing even more merging and more load. Um, of course, having two small indices has an overhead because each index has an overhead in terms of memory. Uh, when you're monitoring uh, Elasticsearch and Solar, you have stats that are per index or per collection and uh, you know the cluster state is bigger and things like that, so it's a trade-off there. Um, but yeah, in this case, we just went with maximum indexing throughput, which would would, would span the, the whole test in a few hours, and uh, our um, index uh, slices were um, 100, uh, 1,000 seconds each, so three indices per hour. We had about 15 to 20 index indices in total. So, uh, let me give you a few words uh, about how this works in practice, actually. So, we start, we will start with Elasticsearch. Uh, in Elasticsearch, we have the notion of properties. We can set properties for a node, and we will use that in hold, the cold node setup. Uh, so, for the hold nodes, we just set the, for example, node.tag uh, property to just explicitly not hot. And the same we do for cold uh, nodes. So we, sp we have uh, <coughs> two types of nodes. One, se one set with node.tag cold and the other hot. Then we use the index templates and shard allocation awareness uh, to actually create new indices. The good thing about Elasticsearch here is that whenever your data comes in and the index is not created, by default, Elasticsearch will create a new index. So if we would, for example, start, logging, uh, start sending logs right now to Elasticsearch that was just started, it would create the proper index. Use the index templates that we <coughs> pushed there, uh, which has the shard allocation uh, awareness attributes. So we say that for new indices that uh, are newly created, they should, be, uh, they should have that no, uh, the node.tag equals to, uh, to hot. That means that Elasticsearch will create them on the hot nodes. When that happens, uh, and that happens automatically. Uh, we don't have to care about that at all. Then uh, when there is a time that we want that hot index to be actually moved to a cold storage, that happens after one day, two days, depending on what we call the hot uh, storage. Because we are not indexing uh, historical, the historical data usually, we can force merge the index. So we lower down the number of segments to a single segment to speed up the queries, because the more segments we have in Lucene index, the slower the queries will be, at least slightly. So we have a cron job on the Elasticsearch side that will uh, optimize the index, the do, do the forced merge with max segments equal to one, and update the shard allocation attribute to point to node.tag cold, which means that the uh, Elasticsearch will just move automatically the index from the hot nodes to the cold one, and again, that's happened automatically. We don't have to do anything about that. 
When it comes to solar, things are a bit more complicated because we have to do everything with the cron job. We have the API, but still we need to do the automation ourselves. So uh, first of all, solar won't create collections in advance or when the data comes in. If you push data to a collection that is not known and is not created, solar will just say, go away with the data, I don't like it. Uh, so we need to create the, in this, uh, the collections in advance. Uh, to point out to a given nodes, we again use a property in a, in a command that creates the uh, collection called the create node set, and we set and we specify the names of the nodes. For example, so node one to three will be hot, and this is where the co co hot uh, collection will uh, be uh, deployed. Then we have the again the situation that after a few days we want to move that to that collection to called nodes, and first we of course optimize again with the API call, and here we can't update the properties, we just need to create new replicas for that particular collection on the called nodes, allow Solar to replicate the data using the replication uh, functionality, and after the replication has been done, uh, we can remove the collection from hot nodes, and this is what's the process for all, for both of them. So as we can see, in, in that case, Elasticsearch is, allows us to easier handle the uh, process of moving between hot and cold nodes. So uh, to give you a notion of how the indexing was working uh, during that time, we can see that the top, top two graphs are the before, uh, before implementing the procedure of hot and cold uh, nodes. After we've implemented it, we can see that for solar, we had almost constant uh, querying, uh, indexing throughput, but spiky. Why spiky? Uh, we are not sure yet uh, whether it's a bug in solar or something like that, but uh, when we uh, were running that with a cron job, if we were uh, switching the collections uh, from hot to cold nodes, when the indexing happened, uh, we got indexed, uh, indexing stalled. So we need to figure out yet why that happened, but if we would actually stop the indexing for a second, everything would be okay. And this is actually, the spikes are what, because we stopped the indexing. Uh, I suppose that if, when we found the case, uh, cause it will be mostly static. And in Elasticsearch, again, we can see the increase in throughput because we are indexing to smaller indices. The segment merging uh, is less stressful for uh, the operating system and for Lucene itself. And we can see the increase in throughput from 3.2K per second to about 4.6K. So that the growth is pretty uh, pretty nice when it comes to indexing logs. And for the queries, uh, we've, we, we can see uh, more of what we've seen before in terms of uh, how they scale, but um, with the hot and cold setup, because the cold nodes hold data that is now uh, optimized and they're not bothered by uh, any indexing or caching validation, um, now they can uh, hold up to three or four times more data than uh, uh, than the nodes that we had before in, in both cases. Um, and Elasticsearch, again, is very good at uh, doing filtering. And uh, Solar uh, now, in this, in this case, was uh, about twice as fast when it comes to simple aggregations or facets. Um, and about t 10 times as fast when it comes to the nested aggregation. Um, yeah, the filters on the Elasticsearch side are um, are about... Two times. Two times faster, yeah, still. Yeah. So... And, okay. Um, so to wrap this up with, with the logs use case, using time-based indices in hot and cold uh, nodes policy helps in both use cases. Um, and Elasticsearch tends to be faster at filtering and Solar tends to be faster at faceting. Um, it is worth noting here that Elasticsearch has more capable, even with Solar 5.2 with the nested facet and things like that, with Elasticsearch you can do more kinds of aggregations. So we, in this case we tried to compare common functionality just to look at the performance. So. 
just as a summary, we speed up uh, things slightly. So uh, just as a summary uh, for the things we uh, did for the talk, the tests, uh, we've noticed that in most cases, the difference in configuration you've used matters more than it comes than when it comes to the product you use. Because if you configure SOAR or Elasticsearch in a bad way, uh, it will perform bad. Uh, so this is, this is what, you, what you will get. For example, you've seen the, uh, the querying with SOAR having the query result cache by default set to 512, and you've seen the throughput increase in a, in a, large, uh, in a large way. However, if you would remove the caches completely, uh, then we have lower, lower performance, way lower performance. But in a real world scenario, in such case, this cache would be invalidated constantly because you would probably have updates to the data because this is a top level cache. So whatever its segment uh, is refreshed actually, that cache needs to be invalidated. And because of that, that performance won't be as good as, as, uh, as you've seen. Uh, we have to be honest, uh, we expect a slightly different result from the test we did. Uh, we were amazed about some, some results. We repeated the tests to just make sure that everything is okay. Uh, but we had the constant results like we, we've shown. So if you would like to repeat that, we've shown the GitHub account, please do that and let us know if, the, if you get the similar results or at least a similar pattern in results because on different machines you will get the different results. That's, that's normal. And finally, we would really encourage you to do your own test. Don't believe even us in the slides we have. Don't believe everything you see. Just do your own, do your own tests with your own data, with your own queries and then you can say that for your use case, this is how Solar and Elasticsearch works. Yeah, fake your own numbers. Uh, <laughs> if you like to fake numbers like we do, uh, we are hiring. This is a slide that I saw three years ago from Rafael's talk and this is how I got here. So uh, I think this is it. <clears throat> Call us maybe and if you have any questions, yeah. we will gladly... if you gladly... have any questions, we have time, apparently. Yeah. Let's dance. Ha, ha, ha.